It's WWE versus AEW this Friday. And if you're AEW, oh dear, how do I put this? Here comes the pain. Don't touch that mouse unless you're trying to subscribe. The next pro wrestling bit coming at you in three, two, one. WWE is set to go all WWE on AEW Rampage by counter-programming AEW's dying Friday night flagship with a supersized smackdown on FS1. Since CM Punk's return, which went gangbusters in viewership, Rampage has fallen off a cliff, drawing record lows every Friday night for seven straight weeks, including last week despite CM Punk wrestling. Uh oh. WWE still has a bad taste in its mouth after getting beaten handily during the Wednesday Night Wars, but this time around, it's not going to be Uncle Paul's super indie with the undisputed era and a cast of small white wrestlers with very limited appeal. WWE is bringing out the big guns. Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns, Becky Lynch vs. Sasha Banks, commercial free. SmackDown is even advertising the payoff for what has quietly become one of its best storylines in Naomi vs. Sonya Deville, which is literally a feud about being black and overlooked in pro wrestling, a story as old as the median age of viewership in NXT. That joke can use some editing, let's run that back. A story as old as Dave Meltzer. Triple H might have been the scapegoat for losing the Wednesday Night Wars, but in the Friday Night Wars, WWE is taking a sledgehammer to an ant farm. Both SmackDown and Rampage are also set to face stiff competition from the MLB playoffs and college football. College football's ratings are on fire, by the way, despite having, cover your ears, Tony, black athletes and black superstars at every turn. Between sports programming and WWE coming for AEW's whole life, Tony Khan pulled a Vince McMahon and is now trying his hand at hot shotting by going head to head with SmackDown with a big time mainstream matchup between Brian Danielson and Minoru Suzuki. Yes, a lot of men who already watch AEW are going to be really excited about that. But motherfucker, you've got Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns on the other channel. If Brian Danielson and Nick Jackson couldn't drag Rampage out of its current slump, you think doubling down on catering to the hardcores will? See, this is what happens when you book a product designed to chase imaginary five-star ratings, whatever that means. AEW's really good at turning Dave Meltzer into Dave Moisture, but that ain't gonna get any of the women or black people that they need in order for this product to be considered cool. Still, Tony Khan is talking his shit. Khan tweeted that he couldn't wait for AEW to beat WWE's A-Show. Who knows, anything can happen. But the more I think about it, the less likely I think that is. And I think Tony Khan realizes that. Just days after his bold prediction, Khan told Moose and Maggie that it really isn't about the competition. But prior to that, Khan took to Twitter and said he embraces the competitive spirit between WWE and AEW. He just wants a friendly rivalry. But four days later, Tony Khan said that WWE Raw sucked on Monday. Then he talked about how much more money he makes than WWE, because nothing says friendly rivalry like somebody bringing up their bank account. That must be more of that competitive spirit. Nothing's getting personal at all. Just some good nature, don't make me use my trust fund. I've been wrong before, and I could be wrong about this one, but I think Super SmackDown beats the brakes off AEW Rampage. The map just isn't on AEW's side here. Rampage did just over 500,000 viewers last week. The last time SmackDown was on FS1, it did just over a million viewers. Facing some competition this time around, let's say conservatively, SmackDown does 800,000. That means AEW Thunder will have to come up with over 300,000 viewers in the span of one week in order to beat SmackDown. Brother, that ain't happening. Not on an internet wrestling showcase tailor-made for the male-dominated, hardcore audience that already watches your show, some of whom abandoned it weeks ago. In fact, the only time in Rampage history that the show had a week-to-week -week increase of over 300,000 viewers was for CM Punk's major return after seven years inside the United Center. So unless you're booking a Miami Heat reunion inside Hard Rock Stadium, the Friday Night Wars might get real ugly 
real fast for AEW. And something tells me this might not be the last time WWE tries to counter-program AEW Rampage possibly to death. These great white sharks in Stamford smell blood in the water and they're trying to eat. There's a misconception that the wrestling business is hot right now because there are these two national companies going to war similar to what happened during wrestling's hottest period in the 90s. But this ain't the Monday Night Wars, not even close. Wrestling is very cold right now, as evidenced by AEW's current struggle to get a second show off the ground, in addition to this week's scary low ticket sales across both companies. And even though tickets figure to rebound in the coming weeks, these AEW Rampage ratings would not be this bad if the wrestling business was really that hot. The decline of WWE is a much bigger story than the rise of AEW. At the risk of sounding like the Black Dan Lambert, AEW is not creating new fans, they're just doing a better job of wooing a disillusioned hardcore audience to watch their product. Show me all the people who never watched wrestling in their lives before who are now watching AEW. I dare you, you can't. These aren't casuals, they're New Japan World subscribers. This isn't a war, but more of a slap fight between two niche companies in a business that's become more niche with every passing year that it leans into this cockamamie idea that work rate draws ratings and creates megastars because there has been no evidence of that over the past 10 years. How's professional wrestling been working out for you, Phil? Has any of that professional wrestling against Daniel Garcia given the MLB or college football a run for its money yet? You wanna know what did draw the summer of Cena. You know, that big, muscular, crossover star who was the last transcendent talent that this business ever saw? I, for one, will be interested to see just how effective the quote-unquote outdated big men like Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar fare against all elite work rate. Still, win or lose, the two biggest wrestling companies in the world are now vying for the attention of a smaller, mostly hardcore audience while mainstream sports continue to captivate an entire nation in ways that pro wrestling used to. Either way, I look forward to the competitive spirit of the Friday Night Thumb Wars. Who do you think is winning head-to-head? -head? AEW Rampage or Friday Night SmackDown? Sound off in the comments!